multiple, multiple, multiple offers. Multiple, multiple, multiple offers. What's up guys? Peter here from the Kostecki Real Estate Group. Today, we're talking about multiple offers and how to win them. The name of the game in multiple offers is make it easy for the seller to take your offer. This often breaks down to having the highest price, but other terms and nuances can make a huge difference. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top six things you can do to come out on top in multiple offers. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Peter Kostecki. I'm a top real estate broker here in Kitchener-Waterloo, and I put out weekly content, including tips for sellers, buyers, and our fantastic listings here in Kitchener-Waterloo and Waterloo Region. So smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn the bell on so you don't miss another video. Number six, mortgage pre-approval and backup plan. Now, you need to get a mortgage pre-approval. This may be the most obvious point on this whole list, but think of it this way. You wouldn't go to the mall and try to go shopping without knowing how much is in your bank account. So it's silly to go shopping for a home without knowing how much you can afford. Also, with the market moving so quickly, it's imperative that your financing is in order. Now, I'm not talking about typing in your salary on an online mortgage calculator. You need to connect with a mortgage broker, credit union, or bank and get an actual mortgage pre-approval. They will ask you for your T4s, notice of assessment, T1 general, tax information, pay stubs, etc. Talk to your mortgage broker and realtor to see whether it's advisable to submit an offer without a financing condition. In this current market, having any conditions in your offer will severely hinder your chances of the seller accepting your offer. If you're going to waive or not include a financing condition, make sure that you have a backup plan. So let's say you're putting 5% down on a $500,000 home. You'll be putting down $25,000 and the bank will issue a mortgage for the rest. So $475,000 mortgage. Now, what happens if the bank appraises the home and it only appraises at $480,000? That means the bank will only lend you 95% of $480,000, which means you're going to be $20,000 short. So you need to have a backup plan just in case. If this happens, where are you gonna get the $20,000 from? Parents, friends, investments? You need to figure this out. This does occur rarely, but is more common in a crazy market like today. So you need to lean on your agent to ensure you're paying a fair purchase price for the home you're trying to buy and that there are comparable sales that will support that purchase price, which will decrease the possibility of the home under appraising. Number five, understanding the comparables in the neighborhood. Guys, the list price is used as a marketing tool to attract as many buyers as we can to a listing. For example, townhomes in a particular neighborhood are selling anywhere from $650,000 to $725,000 depending on the condition of the home and depending on whether it's an end unit or an interior unit. A new listing hits the market at $550,000 and the seller and listing agent has decided to hold off reviewing any offers until they've been on the market for one week. Remember, the seller's listing agent has presented all of the sales in the neighborhood and the comparables or comps to the seller. They understand what the market value of what townhouses are selling for. So don't think you're just gonna walk in and pay list price and be able to get the house. That's not the point. The point is to list the home, get everybody excited, draw as many buyers into the property at the same time as possible. And obviously for the seller's intention, the intention is to get above the asking price and get a market value of the home based on recent sales. This is where having a trusted agent as your advisor will help you win. They will explain all of the recent sales in the neighborhood so you know where you'll need to be and you won't overpay. Number four, do your due diligence. The current market places a lot of pressure on you, the buyer. Sellers are receiving five, 10, 30 offers on their home. So the chances of them accepting a conditional offer are highly unlikely, to be honest. Many of my sellers are getting you know, 15, 17 offers 
almost never do they accept a conditional offer. There's always someone, the goal is always to get a firm and binding offer without conditions. And you can't blame them. Wouldn't you do the same? This is where apprehension can come in on your end. What if the foundation has cracks or the roof has to be replaced, there's mold in the attic, or the furnace is on its last legs? You obviously don't wanna buy a lemon. That being said, if you insert a home inspection condition into your offer, it's gonna severely reduce your chances of the seller actually accepting your offer and moving forward with you. My advice is to assess each home individually. If a home is three years old, the chances of it needing a new roof or furnace are slim. That being said, I've seen many problems with new homes too, so you have to be careful. On the other hand, if there's a century home, there could be many years of remodels, renovations, electrical updates, plumbing updates, hidden issues that you may or may not know about or even the previous owners don't know about. Work with a pro that can assess the probability of these issues occurring. So a pro tip is to get a pre-home inspection. You may be able to get in with a home inspector and do an inspection before submitting your offer to make sure that you're actually happy with the home and the condition that it's in. Now, you may be out a few hundred dollars if you don't get your offer accepted, but at least you'll have that peace of mind. Another example pertains to when you're purchasing a condominium. Typically when purchasing a condo, a standard condition to include in your offer is the ability for your lawyer to review the condominium status certificate and make sure that it's satisfactory to you. A condo status certificate outlines the financial status of the condo, rules, regulations, lawsuits, etc. So you definitely want to review all of these details and understand what you're buying into. Smart listing agents will pre-purchase the status certificate and have it available for buyers to review prior to submitting their offer. This shaves off two weeks of time for a buyer to tie up a potential property if a conditional offer is accepted. So this allows you as the buyer to take that status certificate, send it to your lawyer, have them review it, make sure that you're happy with everything, and then you can submit an offer without that condition, therefore giving you and the seller a better offer. Remember, you want to make it easy for the seller to pick you. Number three, what is important to the seller? Have your realtor reach out to the seller, and truthfully, your realtor should know, know better. Have your realtor reach out to the seller and figure out what is important to them. Do they want that playground in their backyard because their kids absolutely love it and they want to take it to the next place? Or do they want to take the washing machine because it's an amazing brand and they bought it five months ago and they're crazy about their washing machine? Give them what they want. It's not worth losing a home over a thousand or two thousand dollar washing machine or a three thousand dollar playground. Give the seller what they want. Make it easy for them to pick you. Number two, figure out bridge financing. Bridge financing is a secret weapon that will give you peace of mind and also the seller peace of mind. For example, you need to sell your place and you want to purchase something else. Given the current market conditions, everything is moving quickly, so you want to first secure your home to make sure they have a place to go and then sell your place. Because the problem is not selling your home, it's actually finding the right home because of multiple offers. So let's say today you purchase a home and the seller is requesting 45 days for a closing. Perfect, you get it accepted, you win, congratulations. Then you list your home next week and get an offer, you know, a week later, a few days later, that now closes 15 days after your purchase. This creates a two week gap here where you don't have financing. This financing is made up with what's called a bridge loan. A bridge loan allows you to close on your purchase before your actual home has sold and closed. You have to speak to your mortgage broker to see if you can get approved for this because not everyone can. This will give the seller peace of mind that you can close the deal. A caveat to remember about this is your bank will not issue a bridge loan until you have a firm and binding offer on your home. Number one, max out your deposit and bring a bank draft. Now. Let's think of this situation. You're purchasing a $1 million home and you're putting 20% down. So you're gonna put down $200,000 on closing. The bank is gonna finance the rest, the $800,000 as a, as a mortgage, for example. 
the seller and the listing agent of this particular home that you're purchasing are asking for $35,000 down as a deposit with your offer. That deposit gets held in a trust account at the listing brokerage and at closing gets applied to the purchase price. Now let's say you have the ability to put down $75,000 or $100,000 down as a deposit. Do it. If it comes down to it neck and neck, let's say you, it's you and the other offer and you guys have the same price, you have no conditions, one offer has $35,000, the other offer has $100,000, who is the seller gonna feel more confident with to close the deal? 35K or 100K? Who has more skin in the game? Obviously the 100,000. So if you can do simple things like this, do it. I've seen this be the difference between the seller choosing one offer over the other. Now, let's take this a step further. Go to the bank and get a bank draft for the $100,000 deposit made out to the listing brokerage and submit a photocopy of it with your offer. This will show the seller that you're not playing around and you're serious. You're here to buy their home. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you're looking to buy or sell in Waterloo region, please reach out to me. We'd love to take care of you. Alternatively, if you're looking to make a move somewhere else in Ontario, whether it's buying or selling, reach out to me too. I've got a great network of realtors that I could refer you to that are ready to work for you. If you learned something today, make sure to like this video and let me know in the comments what other topics you want me to talk about on this channel. For the Kostecki Real Estate Group, I'm Peter Kostecki. We'll talk to you soon. My advice is to assess each properly my advice is to assess each properly differently. Or, my advice is to assess each properly. <sighs> <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> 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 <laughs>